Yesterday I talked about raga, which is where our attachment to the sweet things, the things we like being sometimes overly attached and how that can cause suffering. And today is sort of the opposite, the aversion. So um, those are the two two big obstacles that can cause problems when you are, when you are averting or repulsed um, and you want to stop doing something. So that I think in the class today around maybe postures that you don't like as much. So, um, and when I thought about that, I thought, oh, that probably means a lot of core. Um, so we're gonna do some core today. We'll do some other postures, but usually it's core and back bends that people really just sort of don't like. And so the thought process behind this is with Divesha is, um, Acknowledge those things you don't like, break them down a little bit into manageable pieces, figure out why it is you don't like them, um, and then take a neutral attitude and see how you can problem solve a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so I'll start with some core and then we'll go um, into some other postures <clears throat> and see if we can make some of these postures that may be less popular um, a little bit more accessible. So. We're going to start actually on your mat. Do have your black block in your bio. So we're going to start lying down on your mat. So have your block in your bio. And what we're going to do is lie on our backs. Take your hands behind your head. And just take a moment here and we'll lift your shoulders off the ground. Just take a moment and find some of your front core muscles. And we're going to be working the side and the back as well and getting into the hips. But just building up some heat this way. So now take your now take your block and place your block on your shins so that your shins are roughly parallel to the ground. And from here you may find that there's a little bit of a curve in your low back, which is fine because your back does curve, but you want your middle back to press down a little bit more. So try to anchor down in the back of your rib cage and that'll flatten the curve in your back a little bit, but it shouldn't make your low back totally flat on the ground. And then from here, we're gonna do a few little crunches. So as you lift and exhale, just kind of lift your shoulders off the ground. So we're not trying to do a whole lot going toward the legs right now. We're just trying to lift shoulders off the ground, find your transverse abdominals here. And then inhale, bring your, your head back down. Then exhale, lift up and inhale, come down. Just go with your breath. Exhale as you come up, inhale as you come down. Now, keep doing this, but flex the feet and imagine that you're pushing your heels into a wall. Imagine that there's some resistance on the bottoms of your feet. Okay, now bring your head and shoulders back to the ground and now extend your legs a little bit so they won't go totally straight and you're definitely worried about that block. You want to make sure that block doesn't fall. But extend your legs as much as you feel comfortable and then pull the rib cage back down again because you'll notice that your middle back is starting to arch off the ground. And then pull those knees back in and just make sure you're breathing. And then exhale, press away. And you can hold it, just make sure your breath is nice and even and then come back in all right now we're gonna do this with our shoulders off the ground so press out as if you're pressing into a wall with the bottoms of your feet and then lift your shoulders up and then see if you can get a little bit straighter with the legs and they might go really straight they might even go really low but you really want to make sure your middle back stays on the ground so if it really starts popping up off the ground don't go any further less is more here All right, come back, take the block and put it to the side for a moment, and then hug your knees into your chest and roll gently from side to side. Okay, we're going to add in some cross body stuff. And this is where it gets really helpful because this is how our body moves in diagonals. So next thing we're going to do, you're going to take your legs back to that original place, put your block 
long wise, lengthwise here. You're gonna put the short end of your block against your thigh. And you're gonna bring your right elbow or the back of your right arm to the blocks. You're pressing your block and your thigh into each other. Then lift your head and shoulders up and bring your hands behind your head again. Nice big breath. Now press right leg and right arm into each other and extend your left leg out. And then pull it back in. And then extend it out. And exhale, pull it back in. Inhale, extend it out. Exhale, pull it back in. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, pull it back in. One more. All right, now as you exhale, you're going to pull that left knee in towards your left elbow and try to touch. And then inhale, extend. And then exhale, try to touch. Inhale, extend. Exhale, try to touch. Inhale, extend. Two more. And last one. All right, put the left foot on the ground and bring your head down and let's go for the other side. So right foot will come onto the ground for a moment. Bring your left leg up. Place the short end of the block against the front of the left thigh. Place the left hand behind the head and then bring your left arm forward so you can press the back of your left arm, left elbow into the block, and then bring your hands behind your head, both of them. Then you're going to start with your legs up, previous position, and then you're going to inhale, extend out. Exhale, come back in. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, come back in. Three more of these. All right, now we're going to add in, trying to touch the elbow and knee. So inhale, extend, and then exhale, pull the knee in towards your elbow. Inhale, extend, exhale, pull the knee in. Three more of these. All right, and then bring your head and shoulders back to the ground. Remove the block. Do a happy baby dead bug. Grab your big toes if you can and rock from side to side. And you can roll up and down your spine to come up or you can roll over onto one side. So your choice. So do a couple rolls up and down and then come up to a seated posture. All right, so now bring the bottoms of your feet together. So I'll turn towards you, but bring the bottoms of the feet toward each other. And just find a Baddha Konasana here, bound angle. Feet are going to open up like a little book, and they're going to bring your forehead towards your toes. So you're going to round your back a bit, pull your chin into your chest, and then swing gently from side to side. Okay, and then we're going to get a little bit of the inner thigh in here, and this is a pretty straightforward one, but just in case you're a little tight in the hips and inner thighs, blocks can be helpful just to keep you from falling over backwards, feeling like you've got some support here. So you can plank each block behind you, and then um, it seems pretty straightforward, but if your hips are tight, this is pretty tough, especially if your inner thighs are tight. So you're going to extend your legs out and then pull them back in, and then extend your legs out and then pull them back in. And just do a few of these. Extend out, pull them back in, extend out. Keep breathing here. All right, come to the out variation here. And we're gonna go for somewhat of a forward bend, but again, we're just warming up here, so your hamstrings are still probably pretty tight. So just kind of walk yourself forward, and if you're really tight in the hamstrings and low back, this may be as far as you go. If you're feeling a little bit more flexible, by all means, go a little bit deeper, but don't try to force anything right now. You're really just sort of testing it out to see where your legs and hips and inner thighs are. Breathe deeply. All right, 
come back up. And now we're gonna go for boat pose. So with boat, go for bent legs on this one. So your legs are bent. You may want a block on either side here. So keep them close by. Roll the shoulders onto your back. Zip up your low belly. Try not to collapse the back here. So this cheating posture, grabbing back to the thighs can be really helpful. Rolling the shoulders onto your back and getting your back nice and long. You can always come back to this if you feel like you're starting to collapse through the back. And then take some nice deep breaths. So we're gonna go, this is Navasana, the boat, where the NAV comes from in navel. So from here, we're gonna to try to go to Ardha Navasana, which is half boat. So essentially, slowly come down, slowly, slowly, slowly. You can keep your knees a little bent here. And see if you can get your middle back to the ground. And then see if you can extend your legs a little bit. All right, bring those knees back in. And see if you can slowly come back up to your Ardha Navasana. Now take your arms over to the right side. See if you can get your left elbow and your right knee to get closer to each other. Don't forget to breathe. This is one of those postures where the breathing sort of stops accidentally. All right, come back to the center and then twist over to the other side. All right, cross your ankles, come forward and then do a little forward bend here. And then use your blocks. And this is just to get the shoulders and scapula to start warming up. So take the blocks next to your hips, cross at your ankles, lift your knees a little bit, and then push down. Just feel the scapula moving up and down here. The shoulder, rotator cuffs, etc. All right, let's try this one more time. Bring those legs up. Again, you don't have to go for straight legs unless you feel really strong. Pull those shoulders onto your back. Grab the backs of your thighs. Big breaths. All right, extend your left leg a little bit. Keep that right knee bent and then do that twist again. Bring that left elbow to the outside of the right knee. All right, come back to the center and then extend your right leg a little bit and bring your right elbow to your left. All right, cross the ankles again. Do a little bit of a forward bend just in case any low back tension built up. And then do a little bit of a crunch here. So you're gonna try to lift your hips and push down with your arms. Shoulder blades go down your back. So shoulder blades down, lift, and then come on out of that. Nice job. Okay, so we're gonna come on to our bellies for a moment. Get some of our back muscles warm up here. So first one is just a locust, a variation of locust. So walk your hands back in line with your shoulders. Roll your shoulders onto your back. Roll your pubic bone toward the ground. Zip up your belly. It's almost as if you're trying to pull your belly and ribs off the front, off the ground into the front of your spine. And then lift your legs up and lift your chest up. And I'm actually, I should be able to lift my hands off the ground here. So we're just doing some back strengthening. The core has a front and a back. Take some nice big breaths. All right, take a moment, make a little pillow with your hands, turn your head to one side, rest your cheek on your hands, completely melt your body into the ground. All right, let's do another one. This time we're gonna loosely grip our hands behind our back so you may not be able to get your elbows straight and that's okay. Roll the shoulders onto your back, press your fist into your hips, roll your pubic bone toward the ground, lift your legs up, squeeze your legs together, look up. All right, and then release. Make a little pillow, turn your head the other direction. 
Rest, big breaths. Sink into the ground. On each exhale, grow heavier and heavier and melt into the ground. All right, one more thing for the back. So now we're gonna go cross body here. So you're gonna extend your arms out, lift your left arm and right leg, and then you're gonna do a little bit more of this. You're gonna bring that left hand to the front of your forehead and push up and keep lifting that right leg. Now lift your left leg and your right arm. All right, release, make a pillow, turn your head the other direction again, take some nice deep breaths. All right, let's go for the other side. Extend out, lift your left leg and your right arm. Pull the belly in, roll your pubic bone toward the ground. And now bring that right hand in and press up into your forehead. Lift the elbow. And now lift the right leg and the left arm. All right, release, make a little pillow, turn your head the other direction. We've got one more to go. All right, next one. So you're gonna keep your feet down this time, which is really hard to do. The feet wanna pop up, but keep pressing your toenails on the ground. Roll your pubic bone toward the ground. And zip up the belly, pull the front ribs in. Now take your hands behind your back, behind the head, and lift up. Keep pressing those toenails down and lift your elbows. All right, and then bring the hands down behind the shoulders, roll the shoulders onto your back and come into a child's pose. All right, we're gonna find a downward dog. So spread your fingers out nice and wide. And what I always find is when I started on the ground, no matter what I'm doing on the ground, I get really annoyed about coming up to standing. So if that's going through your head right now, acknowledge that. Just take a moment and recognize that that's that aversion right there. And acknowledging it, becoming more neutral about it is fine. In fact, it's necessary to evolve. So as you pull the belly in, pull the belly in and pull the front ribs in, zip up the belly, you're rounding the back here. Exhale, and then inhale, extend. And then exhale, round the bag, zip up your belly, take your chin into your chest. Inhale, extend. Three more of these. Turn this into a down dot, and then walk it out a little bit. Press one heel toward the ground, press the other heel toward the ground. All right, from your down dot, if you're feeling pretty tight in the backs of the legs, put a little bend in your knees, press your chest towards your toes, zip up your belly, pull the front ribs in, and then just check your neck, make sure it's relaxed, and you wanna shake your head a little bit, nod your head a little bit. And then from here, take your left hand and grab either your right thigh, right calf, right ankle, whatever you can grab. Find something and then pull gently look under your right armpit. All okay, right, let that go. Left hand to the ground. Grab any part of your left leg. And then once you grab, 
gently pull and look under your left armpit. All right, and then I'll let that go and then look up and step forward. We're going to hang for a moment. Grab your elbows, press your top forearm into your bottom forearm. Zip up your low belly. And you can swing from side to side a little bit. All right, take your hands to your hips, squeeze your elbows toward the sky, bend the knees, and then big inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, take the arms to the sides, Tadasana, mountain pose. All right, we're going to do sun salutation C. Take the arms up on the inhale, look up toward the thumbs. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. Drop your back knee. Take the arms up on the inhale. And big exhale. Take the hands down to the ground. Step back. Lift your left leg toward the sky. Take five breaths here, lifting your inner left thigh toward the sky. So you want some internal rotation of that left leg. See if you can spiral your outer left hip down a little bit. Keep zipping up the low belly, getting a little bit of a lift under the armpits. And then you're going to lunge that left leg forward. So bring your left knee up into your chest. And then once you get it up as close as you can, swing that left foot forward. You can even grab the ankle and kind of pull it forward. And then drop your back knee. Take the arms up on the inhale. And big exhale. Hands down to the ground. Lift your back knee up and step forward. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, take it to the sky. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your right leg back. Drop your back knee. Take the arms up on the inhale. And big exhale. Hands down to the ground. Step back. Lift your right leg toward the sky. Take five breaths here. So work with those legs a little bit more. See if you can drop the left heel, lift the left hip crease. Internally rotate that right leg. See if you can spiral your outer right hip down a little bit. Get a little bit of a lift under your armpits. On your next exhale, bring that right knee in as close as you can to the back of your right arm. And then once you're there, step it forward. Drop your back leg, take the arms up on the inhale. And big exhale. Hands down the ground. Step your left leg forward. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, arms to the sides. Right, let's add a couple twists to this. Take the arms up on the inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. Drop your back knee. Let's do an open twist first. You're going to plant your left hand below your left shoulder. Turn your right toes out to the right. And then bring your right hand to your thigh and roll both shoulders onto your back and look over your right shoulder. So this is great here. You're doing a nice twist, um, working inner thighs, working hips. So there's a lot happening here. This is great. If you want to go a little bit deeper and open up that right shoulder, reach your right arm back. And you can also try to bend your back foot, back leg, and see if you can grab your back foot. So those are just extra options. And you can play with that and see if you can do it. Roll your left shoulder onto your back since it likes to roll in. Don't forget to breathe. All right, and then take that right hand back down, step back, <clears throat> lift your left leg toward the sky, open up the hip this time, and bend the knee. And keep lifting that left knee so you feel your outer left glute muscles doing some work. There's a little bit of a tendency to dump into your right shoulder, so if you're doing that, lift your armpit up, try to get your shoulders level. On your next exhale, bring that left knee forward and drop your back knee. Okay, so on this one, we're gonna do a kind of a fun side plank here. So you're gonna plant your right hand below your right shoulder, 
If you're having wrist issues at all, you can always come up a little higher and put your forearm on a block. So what you're gonna do is walk your left foot off the mat, turn your left toes out to about nine o'clock. So if your head's going to 12 o'clock, toes are gonna point out to about nine o'clock. Then you're gonna push down into that left foot and lift your back knee. Then come to the pinky edge of your right foot. So now your right toes are pointing the same direction as your left toes. Take your arm up toward the sky. From here, you're gonna drop your hip to the ground slowly. That's kind of hard to do. And then when you come back up, if you feel like your left leg needs to slide more, go ahead and do that so you can slide it back more and figure out where it needs to go and get more comfortable. We're going to come back up and take the arm over again. So as you inhale, come up and stretch and reach that left arm over your head. And then you're going to exhale, come back down again. And we'll do four more of these. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, come down. Inhale, lift and stretch. Exhale, come down. Last one. And exhale, come down. All right, lift, turn those left toes forward, and then everything steps forward. Inhale, stretch your heart forward. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach your heart forward. Exhale, step your right leg back. Drop your back knee. All right, twist to the left. Bring your right hand down below your right shoulder. You can always come to a forearm on a block. Turn your left toes out. Left hand can start on the thigh. Eventually, you may want to reach back with that left arm. Roll both shoulders onto your back. Breathe. If it seems appropriate, bend your back leg so you can grab the top of your foot. And then we'll bring that left hand back down and step back. Lift your right leg toward the sky. Open up the hip. Bend the knee. Get that left armpit lifting so your shoulders are level. Relax your neck and breathe. And on your exhale, bring that right knee forward. Drop it down. Okay, so walk that right foot off the mat and turn it out to about 3 o'clock. And you may have to readjust. And then you're going to come to the pinky edge of your left foot and take a moment in the side plank here and just see if this is working for you. And then again, we may have to readjust. So you're going to drop that left hip and just put it on the ground for a moment. And then figure out if you need to move your right foot a little bit so that it's better flatter on the ground. All right, so we're going to do five little lifts here. And that arm's going to come over. So from here, inhale, press into the outer edge of your left foot, lift your hips, inhale, extend, and then exhale, come back down. Four more of these. Keep going, big breaths. Two more. And last one. All right. And then we're going to turn forward and step forward. So take your time getting forward. And then step your legs forward. And then we're going to hang for a moment. And just see how everything feels. Grab your elbows. Press your top forearm into your bottom forearm. All right, hands to the hips, squeeze the elbows toward the sky, bend the knees, big inhale, come on up. And exhale, take your hands down to Tadasana. And then let's go for one more little set here. Take the arms up on the inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. All right, let's go for a little bit deeper twist. You're going to bring your hands to your thigh. Take your left arm up and over and stretch over to your right hand side. And then we're going to go for the twist. Take that left arm to the outside of your right leg. Take a moment and lift your rib cage up and twist to your right a little bit more. And then bring your hands together. So this is good. And you can stay right here. Reach your heart forward. Reach your tailbone back. Get your spine long. 
And then if you want to add a little bit extra into this hip and a little bit more balance, flip your back toes over so you can get your knee to lift off the ground a little bit, and eventually your leg will go straight someday. And then look over the right shoulder. So you can touch your thigh with your ribcage and belly, but kind of scoop them in, pull them away from the thigh a little bit so they're not resting. All right, exhale, take the hands down to the ground, step back. Lift your left leg toward the sky. Open up the hip, bend the knee. Again, you can stay here. This is fantastic, but you can also flip your dog if you'd like to. Get into your first back bend. Lift your right heel up high, pivot your toes to the left, and then slowly flip it. And look at your left hand. So your right hand... Imagine it's a screwdriver and it's screwing clockwise into the ground. And let's flip it over. Lunge your left leg forward. And then let's see if we can come down a little bit deeper here. So you may want to use your block. Put your forearms on a block. Or you can do forearms on the ground. Whatever works for you. So keep breathing. Drag to the midline a little bit. <clears throat> All right, let's step that right leg forward and go for the other side. So big inhale, reach your spine forward, exhale, hinge at the hips, inhale, take it to the sky. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step your right leg back. And drop your back knee. All right, let's go for the twist on the left side. So when you're ready, you're going to take that right arm up and over and stretch over to your left. And take that right arm to the outside of your left leg. Lift your rib cage up, twist to the left a little bit. Bring your hands together. Lengthen your spine, lengthen your tailbone back and heart forward. Look over your left shoulder. And then if you feel like you need to get a little bit more into the hips, flip your back toes over. And possibly pushing those toes enough that the knee starts lifting up. And remember, you're breathing here. All right. Unwind. Step back. Lift your right leg toward the sky, open up the hip, bend the knee. Get a little bit of a lift under your left armpit. If this seems pretty challenging, stay here. If you'd like to try to get into the back bend, lift your left heel up high, pivot your toes to the right, bend your left leg a little bit, bring that right leg over, look at your right hand. And then screw that left hand into the ground counterclockwise. All right, flip it back over. Lunge your right leg forward. Bring your arms to the inside of your right leg, possibly down a little bit deeper, maybe on a block or on the ground. And take a few breaths here. Try to keep your spine nice and long. All right, and then let's come forward. Step your left leg forward, inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, arms to the sides. All right, let's do another forward bend. So you're going to take a big step back so that you're turned to the side of your mat. Outer edges of the feet are parallel to the short edges of the mat. And you may want to just eyeball it, see if your wrists are roughly over your ankles. So go pretty wide with the ankles. And then bring your hands to your hips. Squeeze your inner thighs toward each other. Lift your heart on the inhale. And then exhale, forward bend. So wherever you go is fine. A lot of people are really tight and they come to about parallel here. If you can go a little deeper, go for it. Squeeze your elbows toward each other. Notice where your weight is in your feet. So you want to have as much weight in your inner heels as you have in your outer heels. So adjust accordingly. And then bring a little bit more weight into your front heels. All 
All right, inhale, come on up. Let's do another one. So now we're gonna interlace the fingers behind the back. Go for the non-dominant grip. So you're gonna grab your hands behind your back, place your hands in a position where it feels like you're holding somebody else's hand. And then stretch your fist down, draw the shoulders down your back, lift your heart on the inhale, and then exhale forward, bend again. All right, inhale, come on up. Bring your hands to your hips. Let's go for a triangle. Turn your right toes toward the back of your mat. Maybe it's the front of your mat, depending on which direction you're pointing. Make sure your right knee, when it bends, lines up with your middle three toes. So you're tacking your outer right hip back a tiny bit to create some external rotation of that front leg. And then we'll reach through the right-hand side and bring that right hand down to leg. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then take that left arm toward the sky. So find some length through your right side. Push down through your back heel. We're gonna get a little bit more into the shoulders and core here. So that top hand is gonna to come to the back of your head and then you're gonna push your head back into your hand. Now will create a little bit more upper back bend. Keep lifting through the right side. All right, left hand to the hip, bend the front knee. Inhale, come on up. Let's do triangle on the other side. Turn your right toes in, turn your left toes the other direction. Arms out to the sides. Squeeze to the midline. Reach through your left hand side. Bring the hand back down. Take that right arm up. Big breath. Keep trying to roll that left knee slightly out toward the pinky toe so that it lines up with your middle three toes. Push down through your back heel. And then let's add in a little bit more back bend here. Bring that right hand to the back of your head and then push your head back into your right hand. All right, bend that front knee, inhale, come on up. All right, so this next one, your blocks may be very handy. So toe heel in a little bit, grab your block just in case. We're going to get a little bit more through the IT band here. So it's a reverse triangle. So from here, you're going to step your right foot forward and your left foot back. So you have about two to three feet between the legs. You're on two separate railroad tracks here. So just look down and make sure that your left foot is not directly behind your right foot. You want to make sure that you're on separate tracks here for your hips. Then you're going to put a block to the outside of your right foot. And you may, if you're tight in the hamstrings, you may want to go high with that. There is a very good chance that you're tight enough that you never actually get to the block that you're somewhere on the leg. So first thing we're gonna do is take the arms behind the back. If you've got really tight shoulders, you're just gonna grab your elbows and forearms here, elbows or forearms. So that's a really good way to get the shoulders on the back. If you can go a little bit more flexible with the shoulders, try to get the palms and the hands together and elbows pull back. So your choice, which whatever works, works for you, but you'll notice your front ribs kind of pop forward here. So pull the front ribs in, use those transverse abdominal muscles to pull in. Lift your heart on the inhale, and then exhale forward bend. And lift those elbows, breathe deeply, press into the ball of the front foot and the heel of the back foot. Keep lifting the elbows. And then we're gonna go for the twist. So come up about halfway, take your hands to your thigh or your shin, or if you happen to be a little bit more flexible through the hamstrings, you can come to the ground with your fingertips. And then we're gonna go for the twist. So wherever your hands are right now, that's where your twist is going to originate from. If you're up a little higher, you're gonna take that right thumb into your right hip crease, tack it back, reach your heart forward and your tailbone back, lengthen the spine and then twist. And then if you're a little bit more flexible, your hand will come down to the block or down to the ground. Keep tacking that right hip back, and if it stays back on its own, if you're able to keep that thumb back and the hip will just stay there, then you probably can work a little bit deeper into the twist and see if you can get your right arm toward the sky. And then eventually you'll look over your right shoulder. Keep tacking that right hip back though. This is a really tough posture. There's balance involved. Hip opening involved, twisting, it's a lot going, a lot going on. All right, exhale, come down, take your block with you, and you can just turn the other direction and do it on the other side. So, left foot forward, 
<coughs> right foot pointing to about one o'clock. Separate tracks. If you're using your block, stick it to the outside of your left foot. And then let's go for the arms first. So grab your forearms or your elbows, pull the front ribs in. You could also do that prayer position. And then once you're here, front ribs in, lift your chin, big inhale, forward bend. Lift the elbows. All right, let's go for the twist. Come up a little higher, hands to the thigh, shimmer ground. Take some breaths. And let's go for the twist. So place that right hand on the block, on the leg. Take that left thumb, attack your hip back. Push down through your back heel, push down through the ball of your front foot, lengthen, and then gently twist, and look over your left shoulder. And if that hip will stay back, if that left hip has the flexibility and strength to stay back, maybe take that left arm toward the sky. All right, come on down, and we're doing child's pose. So take a moment here, child's pose. All right, so I often do this posture closer to the end of the practice, but it's really nice after all this work we've done to just work into the legs a little bit more. So what you're going to do is lie on your back. You may want your strap. Place the strap around the ball of your foot. If you can grab your big toe, you can go for that instead. So from here, left leg is straight. Back of the left thigh presses into the ground. Left toe is pointing straight up. Make sure this left leg is really strong and active. And then you're going to pull this right leg in. And the right leg how close it comes is often dictated by the left leg. So as long as that left leg is working hard, you're going to figure out where you need to be with this right leg. So pull it in gently. Roll your tailbone toward the ground a little bit. Now lift your head and shoulders up toward your right leg. And bring your head and shoulders back down. All right, take your leg out to the right. So you can either use your strap in your right hand or grab the big toe. Bring your left hand to your hip and take that right leg out to the side. <coughs> and you can look over your left shoulder. All right, bring that leg back up. Switch hands on your strap or foot. Take your right arm toward the side. Look over your right shoulder and start rolling onto your outer left hip and taking your right leg over to the left side. All right, we're gonna add one extra little step. Now, if you can grab your left foot, try it. So you can kind of just lift that left foot off the ground, see if you can grab the top of your foot. And you can also hook a strap over if you can't quite get there. And then, see if you can get the outer left hip and knee back to the ground. And so, one of my teachers calls this the flying ninja. And then see if you can pull your right hip down toward the ground. So it's like you're pulling your right hip toward your left hip. Keep looking over your right shoulder. All right, and unwind. Let's go for the other side. Take that left leg up, grab your foot or strap, extend your right leg, press the back of the right thigh against the ground or toward the ground. Press your right heel into the ground. Breathe deeply. All right, 
lift your head and shoulders up and bow toward that left leg. And bring your head back down. Transfer that strap or foot into your left hand. Bring the right hand to your thigh and keep pressing down. Make sure that right thigh and right hip don't pop up off the ground as you lower your left leg. And look over your right shoulder. All right, bring that leg back up. Switch hands on your foot or strap. Roll onto your outer right hip and bring that left leg across. So the left leg is roughly parallel. Big breathing. Tack that left hip down toward your right hip or toward the ground. Pull it down. Look over your left shoulder. All right, let's see if we can grab that right foot. So you're going to bring the right leg up. See if you can grab the foot. Do your best. And then if you manage to grab it, put that right leg back on the ground. Look over your left shoulder. Pull that left hip towards your right hip. All right, roll back onto your back. Do a happy baby dead bug. And then start stretching out your legs out to the side. So they may not go totally straight, especially if you have tight inner thighs or tight hamstrings, but do what you can. And then roll the tailbone toward the ground. All right, now bring your feet to the ground, but go wide, and we're gonna go for the front of the hips here. So your feet are on the edges of your mat. You're gonna drop your knees over to the right side, and then take your right ankle and place it on top of your left thigh. And you can either let it hang out there or apply a little bit of pressure. So we're just trying to get a little stretch through the front of the hips here. Look over your left shoulder. <coughs> All right, come back to the center. Make sure the feet are on the edges of your mat. Drop your knees over to the other side and take your left ankle and place it on top of your right thigh and then maybe apply pressure and look over your right shoulder. All right, so this next one you have options. We, I'm going to demonstrate back now arm balance, but if you don't want to do arm balance, you can also do this variation where you're doing your arm balance on your back, which is actually a lot more core oriented. It helps you focus more. So if you're interested in doing the arm balance, then you can use the block or not. You can just step on or keep your feet on the ground. I like getting onto a block because it'll lift the hips up a little bit more. Claw the ground. Bring those legs either to the outsides or to the backs of your arms. Make a little shelf here and lift your chin. Claw the ground, maybe lift a foot up, maybe lift both feet up. If you've got both feet up, try to pull them closer to your butt. So see how that works and keep playing with that if that's the one you wanna work on. Otherwise, same posture, but not so much in the wrists, right? So imagine you're clawing the ceiling and doing an arm balance on the ceiling, and you pull your knees in, and then try to touch your toes. And then maybe even try to pull your knees in a little bit closer to your armpits. So breathe, figure out where you wanna be.
All right, and then release and do a child's pose or lie on your back and let the knees drop into each other. <coughs> All right, we're going to do a pigeon. So you can do pigeon on your back if you're already there, or you can do pigeon on your front. Cross the right ankle over, and then if you're on your back, cross your right ankle just below your left knee on the thigh. Grab the back of your thigh or the front of your shin. You can rock a little bit from side to side. Again, you can always do this on your front side if you prefer it. All right, pigeon on the other side. So left ankle comes in. Take about three or four more big breaths. All right, I will show cow face now. So if you're on your back, you can stay there. So you can take your right leg over your left leg. And you can, if you're on your front, you can also do cow face on your front. So it's just up to you. So I'll demonstrate both. Right leg, left leg, knees roughly line up with each other. Grab for the far foot first, and you may need your strap for that to kind of loop the strap around your left foot. But grab over the top of your foot and see if you can grab the pinky edge of your foot. So your shoulders may have to come off the ground. And then you're going to grab the foot that's closer, and then bring your head and shoulders down to the ground. And then just rock from side to side here. So you can also press your knees away from you. If you're on sitting up and you prefer that way, then same thing. So right knee over the left, you're sitting up nice and tall. Maybe doing a bit of a forward bend, your choice. Make sure you're breathing. Gently press your knees away from you. All right, let's go for the other side. So left leg is going to cross over. Grab for the foot that's farthest away. And then grab the foot that's closer. Press your knees away from you. Try to roll your tailbone towards the ground. And then rock from side to side. All right, and then slowly do a down dog or do a happy baby dead bug and rock from side to side again. All right, we're going to go for quadriceps. So one of the easier ways to work on your quadriceps is to lie on your belly. So let's go ahead and do that. And you may need your strap for this one. So from here, you're going to... Bend your right leg, grab your right foot, and you can also put a strap around your right foot. So as you 
Get more flexible in the quadriceps. Your foot comes closer to your hip. Some people are really tight in the quads. So if that's the case, press your knee either down toward the ground or toward the wall behind you. And you'll notice my foot is pointing up toward the ceiling. You can also do this with a strap. So the main thing is get those quads to loosen. And the way you do that is to reach through the knee. And then zip up your low belly. All right, let's cover the other side. Grab your left foot, or put the strap around your foot, and zip up your belly, pull the foot in a little bit, but also reach through the knee. All right, now let's try for both feet. So bring your head and shoulders a little bit closer to the ground, your chest closer to the ground. Grab your feet. You can also put your strap around both legs and then reach through the knees, get the shoulders onto your back. So we're not trying to do much of a back bend. There's going to be some back bend that happens in your upper back. You're really just reaching through the knees, getting the quads to lengthen, squeeze the legs into the midline a little bit, keep breathing, pull the belly in, pull the front ribs in. And eventually, this becomes a little bit deeper. You lift your chest up more, but this is good. All right, and then let's go for a child's pose. All right, I'm going to go a little bit um, more into the quads and the hamstrings. And this is really is preparation for a back bend, so don't get too attached to the shape here. Um, and because this is a posture that resembles the splits, if you're on the more flexible side, it is the splits. Um, this can be something that you really are averse to, right? That sort of repels you because there's so much going on and it's so difficult. So don't feel like you have to get into the full splits. You just want to make sure that you get your hamstrings, your quadriceps, and that's going to help you in your back bends later. So first thing you're going to do, take your blocks and get onto your left shin, extend your right leg forward, and just do a nice forward bend here. So wherever your forward bend is is fine. You're going to drag your right heel back. So you're pulling your leg back into your hip socket. And you can turn your toes in and out. I like to move through the back of the hamstrings a little bit here. And we are going to start sliding into something that more resembles the splits, but take your time and breathe through it and don't feel like you have to go super deep. So. Slide that right foot forward a little bit more, flip your back toes over, maybe walk them back a little bit more. Breathe deeply, wherever you are is fine. Don't forget to breathe. As long as you're feeling a quad stretch in your back leg and a hamstring stretch, stretch in your front leg, you are in good shape. That's exactly where you want to be. And you can even kind of rock a little bit from side to side. That can help a lot. Go from the other side. So start simple. On your right shin, left leg forward, flex your toes back towards you, drag your heel back towards you on the mat. A little bit of a forward bend here, and then turn your toes in a little bit, turn your toes out a little bit, keep dragging the heel back. All right, start sliding to something a little bit more splits-like, but mostly you're just trying to get something to happen on both sides of the legs. So breathe deeply. Resist the slide a little bit, so your back toes should be flipped over for as long as you can keep them flipped over. Pads the toes on the ground, so kind of resisting and pushing forward. Rocking from side to side is a good idea. Don't forget to breathe and smile. This is one of those postures where people get very serious faces. So... Relax your jaw. All right, 
right, and slowly come out of this one. Let's do a child's pose. It's always a good idea to do a posture that's equal for both sides of the hips after you do an asymmetrical posture. All right, let's work on a little bit more back bending. So we're going to lie our backs, and we're going to do a nice restorative back bend first and just see how those quads are doing. So pull your heels in enough that you can touch your heels with your fingertips. Then you're going to push down into the ground and get the hips up. And this does do some um, glute strengthening and also works some really good core muscles throughout the front and back of the court, and then you're going to go ahead and take this block at the medium height and put it under your hips. And we're going to try to go a little higher. So this is a good place. This is where a second block may come in handy because some people are fine here, but there, there's a, it just seems like there's a lot of space between the medium height and the, the tallest height for a lot of people. So roll the shoulders under your back so you can grab your mat and get your shoulders rolled underneath you. Press the back of the head into the ground. And we're going to try to go a little bit higher. And again, this may require that you stack two blocks on top of each other. So I'll demonstrate that one first, and then you can go to the tallest one if you want. So blocks will stack on top of each other, so you're getting a little bit higher. Nice big breath. And then if you want to go for the highest one, then that's one inch higher, essentially. Then you're going to go right under your sacrum, pretty close to your tailbone, and then continue to press your feet into the ground. Press the back of the head into the ground as well. If it seems appropriate, see if you can clasp your hands on the other side of the block. Get the shoulders to roll underneath you a little bit more. All right, and then lift by pushing down into the feet and remove the block. Drop your hips, walk your feet up to the sides of your mat, and drop the knees in toward each other. All right, so we're going to keep working through these back bends. Let's do a bridge one more time, and then we'll see if we can get a leg up and the other leg up. And then we'll try working into the shoulders a little bit more as well. So clasp the hands on either side of the mat. Grab the mat. Walk the feet into the midline again. Press your feet into the ground. Zip up your low belly. Push down really strongly into your left foot. Get the shoulders underneath you. And then take your right leg toward the sky. Bring that leg back down, take a moment and rest. Walk your feet out to the sides of the mat and drop your knees in toward each other. So that burn that you felt in that left thigh, when we go into a full back bend, you should feel that kind of work happening in your quadriceps. So walk the feet back to the midline again. Get the shoulders underneath you, press the back of the head on the ground, press into your inner heels so your hips lift up, and then take your left leg up. Keep pressing down really firmly through that right leg. And bring that foot back down. Drop your hips. Walk your feet out to the sides of your mat. Drop your knees in toward each other. All right. So now for a little bit more back then. Now, some of us are really tight in the shoulders, and that's okay. But what I want you to do is start out simple 
by taking the hands over the shoulders, elbows pointing straight up. So they, you may not actually get into a full back bend, but this shape is really important to start practicing. So elbows are pointing up, fingers are pointing toward the shoulders. Walk those feet in. You're going to do a bridge again, and what you may notice as you do your bridge is that your elbows drop out to the sides. So if that happens, you know you've got some tightness there in the rotator cuffs that you're dealing with, and you're not necessarily going to go into a full back bend. You're just going to keep pointing the elbows toward the ceiling, kind of squeeze in as if you're squeezing a block between your elbows. So push into your feet. Do that same bridge we were doing before. Squeeze the elbows into an imaginary block. If that seems feasible, then you may want to take it a step further and push into your hands so you can get your upper back off the ground. So you can just experiment there. Can I push and get the upper back off the ground? If you can get your upper back off the ground, then there's a good chance you might be able to get your top of your head to the ground. And this is where blocks can be really handy. So I'm going to demonstrate this one, but if you feel like no way is this going to happen, the blocks may be really helpful. So pressing into the ground, maybe come to the top of the head. That might be it for right now. Elbows pull in, and you'll try to push up all the way. So if that seems like that's within your scope, go for it. If you're struggling either with the wrists or arm strength, you can take blocks and you can put them on the ground. You can also put them against a wall at a 45 degree angle. So I'll just go ahead and do the blocks here just so you can see, but you can do this against the wall and the blocks against the wall help because sometimes the blocks like to slide. So the wall will keep them from sliding. So there we are, and this means you don't have to use as much shoulder flexibility. So you press, and then you push up. And see, those blocks can slide. That's why it's nice to have a wall behind the blocks. All right, take a breather. We're going to do one more. And if you're like, yeah, I'm done with this, you can also flip over onto your belly and grab your feet and go for a Danyanasana on your belly. So from here, decide if you want to be on your back or on your belly. And then zip up the belly. Push through the feet. Don't forget to breathe. All right, come on down, take another break. Big inhale, big exhale, relax. All right, so last one we're gonna do before we rest, forearm balance or forearm balance preparation. So. It's a dolphin if you're just preparing, and most people, that's what they do for a long time. I think I probably did this for months before I was ready to really come up to a forearm balance. So um, if you have a wall, you can walk yourself up a wall, but really the forearm balance is what I'm more interested in right now because these rhomboids, these upper back muscles. So you're gonna take your hands on either side of the block, kind of like little L shapes here around the corners. And if you feel pinching in the shoulders, another variation is to flip your hands over and karate chop the block with the pinky edges of your hands. So keep that in mind if you feel like your shoulders are impinging. And then you're gonna go ahead and come into a forearm balance. So this is huge, because there's a lot happening in your upper back. Press your chest towards your toes, you can walk in a little bit. And then you can play with this. You can pull a knee into your chest and just notice, oh my goodness, there's all this back muscle that has to do work here. And kind of pull in and pull in. Nice deep breaths. All right, take a break. Take a little breather here.
I'm going to do another one. So once you have decided if you'd like to go up a little higher, maybe you'd like to lift a leg and then try the other leg. Um, again, you can always walk up a wall. So from here, find your dolphin again. Squeeze your elbows toward each other. Pull that knee in or maybe extend. Pull the knee in or maybe extend. If you want to walk up a wall, you can do that. So I got these doors here. You can get a foot right around like short hip level and you can kind of hang out here and breathe. So try another 10 breaths wherever you are. All right, and then we have five minutes to relax here. So you have a couple options. You can go into regular Shavasana, just flop out and get really comfortable. You can put your hips on a block. You might even do one with your legs up against the wall. I like doing a little bit more shoulder opener. So one block under my upper back, one block under my head, arms off to the sides. Take some deep breaths.
if you'd like to stay here for a little bit longer, I invite you to do so. And you can just mentally follow along with my voice. If you need to get up and go, take a moment and wiggle your fingers and toes. Take some nice deep stretches. Come up to a seated posture. Again, stay lying down if you can, if you have the time for it. Again, either physically or mentally, bring your hands up to your forehead for kind thoughts, down to your lips for kind words, and down to your heart center for kind intentions. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. You're welcome.